Morning, Ralph. How are you? Good, thanks, Mark. Yourself? Oh, going pretty good. So I guess we're here today to talk a little bit about what ActiMag does with relation to caustic displacement. So I just want you to run me through just some high-level stuff before we go in uh, so that when we're in the meeting there, we can explain to them what, we're, what we can do for them. Does that sound good? Sounds like a plan. Okay, so tell me, Ralph, does ActiMag magnesium hydroxide have more neutralisation power than caustic? Yeah, well, it is interesting. Um, 600 mils of, of ActiMag is equivalent to one litre of 50% caustic. So that would make it a strong alkali. So if it if MHL is a strong alkali, then why isn't it classed as a DG or a hazardous good? Caustic is a strong alkali, as is MHL, but caustic sits at a pH of 14. Um, the difference with uh, MHL is it sits at about a pH of 10.3, um, and that just seems a little bit contrary, but that's it. Yeah, now I'm confused. How can ActiMag be a stronger alkali than caustic, but only have a pH of 10.3 versus 14? That makes no sense to me at all. Can you please explain that a bit? Well, thanks, Mark. I thought you'd never ask. (laughs) In order for me to explain, we're going to have to get into a little bit of simple chemistry. So uh, mind the step. I think we'll just have to get into that. Please do. But this is getting really confusing. Please take me through this slowly. Okay, stay with me. I'll try my best. Caustic is a strong alkali because all the alkalinity value in it is fully soluble and therefore it is expressed immediately and that's why it sits at pH 14. Um, It's a bit like a a sugar hit. It's fully available and you get that burst of energy and and you've got it. Um, I like to think of it, uh, caustic, as the high GI alkali. It really all comes out at once. Okay, hold on a minute. I don't get this GI stuff. Glycemic index, or GI, is a measure of the rate at which energy is released from a foodstuff when you eat it. It's not the same as the calorific value. Two foodstuffs can have exactly the same calorific value. One may be low GI, one is high GI. High GI is is something like sugar, which is immediately released as energy to your body. Something that is low GI is like a whole grain um, uh, food that is slow to break down, but ultimately gives the same energy. So high GI, quickly released, quickly available. Low GI is slow release, slowly available. But the low GI food may have exactly the same calorific value or even greater than the high GI food, but it's not expressed immediately. You won't get that burst of energy out of it. Wait, where are we going here? I'm both confused and getting hungry with all this talk of food. Well, be patient, we are getting there. Um, ActiMag is a slurry-based alkali, which means most of the alkali value is sitting in the solids in the 60% slurry. So it's 60% slurry in water. Only a small amount of that is actually um, soluble. When you've got a 60% slurry of MHL, there's about 900 grams of magnesium hydroxide solids present. Only a very, very small fraction of that, about 0.0122 grams per litre of that versus the 900 grams per litre is actually soluble when you're looking at that material. That means that only a very small fraction is is soluble and only a very small um, fraction is available to react immediately. So therefore, It is a low GI alkali. Now, you really must be having me on here, Ralph. How can that stuff be stronger than 50% caustic? Let's get back to the GI and calorific value. Caustic is both high GI and high calorific value, if you're thinking of it in terms of of, of energy, but it's really okay in terms of alkalinity. Okay, MHL is both um, a high calorific value, if you like, a high neutralisation value alkali, but it is low GI in the sense that it has got very slow release. Because the um, the soluble content is so small and self-limiting, it does not release all its, all its alkali content at once. Only once you start mopping that material up does it further um, release to, to release the rest of the alkali. Okay, I think I'm actually starting to get it. But what's the story with ActiMag? I've heard people say it's different and better. 
Could you explain that a bit more for me? Yes, Actimag is different um, because of the way we make it um, and particularly the way we make the raw material, the MGO from which we hydrate the MGO, the magnesium oxide to make the magnesium hydroxide. Um, Kalex's main technology is a calcination process that makes very high surface area calcined minerals, MGO from magnesite in this case. Generic or more generic uh, calcination processes don't make a fine uh, a fine or a high surface area material because of the way they actually calcine it. They start with a large particle size and try and calcine through the core, the whole particle. We start with a very fine ground particle and then we calcine it very quickly, heat it very quickly, it releases CO2 to convert the magnesite into MGO. That uh, MGO that we make has a very high surface area. All the pores in that particle where the CO2 is released when we calcine it, those pores are retained and actually baked in and frozen into the MGO that we make. So you get a very, very high surface area MGO. That has uh, implications when you hydrate it through to the MHL, that you've got a higher surface area MHL, which is therefore more reactive. The MGO that we make has a surface area of around about 250 to 300 square metres per gram. Get your head around that. Generic MGO has um, a surface area of between 30 and 60 square metres per gram. So we've got a far higher surface area, up to 10 times that of a a commodity grade MGO. So that has quite big implications when we make the MHL from the MGO that we produce. Okay, so hold on a bit. That's like football fields of surface area per gram. That is unbelievable. Surely you try to put one over me again. Even if it is true, which I doubt, why does that even matter? You're right. We are talking about football fields, as I said before. Here I'm showing you a picture of an electron micrograph of a, an MGO particle that we make. And you'll see on this photo very, very fine pores. They are pores at a molecular scale, and each of those pores represent where the CO2 has been driven off. It's like coral. or or like a a honeycomb. It's very, very high surface area, lots of pores, lots of pock marks. So if you think of it, you get a very high surface area per weight of that material. Each of the pores is where that CO2 is released. Now, because the MGO is only sparingly soluble and hydrates very slowly, if you've got a lot, a, uh, a low surface area, commodity grade MGO, uh, you'll get a low surface area MHL particle when you hydrate it by adding water, converting that MGO particle to MHL. But when you've got a high surface area MGO, like the Actimag precursor that we make, um, you'll find that that surface area translates through to a high surface area MHL. Now remember we were talking before about how sparingly soluble it is. Um, if, if it's very sparingly soluble and you've got a, a, a low surface area, it's going to dissolve a lot slower, okay? When you've got a high surface area material like ours, it can dissolve a lot quicker and it also that high surface area makes it more reactive because there's more sites on the particle where things can react. And that's very important if, you, if you're getting into chemistry. And I'm not going to bore you with chemistry, but... High surface area materials are more reactive. Catalysts, for example, are high surface area materials and they make reactions go that wouldn't normally go. Now, the reason the commodity grade MGO and MHL is so unreactive is because you're starting with a pebble and you're putting it through a very slow calcination process and you've got to cook from the outside right through to the inside of that particle. That takes time. And as you do that, you overcook the outsides of the particle. 
I like to think of it like cooking scones. If you're cooking scones in a very hot oven, you can cook the outside very quickly, but you'll find the inside is still doughy and, well, it's uncooked. Uh, and in a very hot oven, you could burn the outside before you've actually cooked the inside. That's what the traditional calcination process is like. You, you're cooking it long and hot in order to cook the core, but you overcook the outside and you sinter, which means you blind all those pores that you formed when you're calcining. So it makes it very low surface area and blinding those pores means you, you, you really don't have a reactive mineral. Surely not. We're not talking about scones. Why are they relevant to the performance of ActiMag? Scones aren't, but I'm trying to give the illustration of why if you cook a large particle at high temperature over a long time, you can make something that should be reactive, unreactive. Immediately when it calcines, you'll have those pores, but as you continue to cook it in order to cook the core, you sinter it and you blind all those pores. So that's why I'm trying to use the whole thing about scones burning the outside whilst you're trying to cook the inside as being like a a metaphor for for, um, how we make Actimag because the the MGO that we produce is all fine and it heats very quickly and calcines very quickly from the outside to the core and that happens within 10 seconds. In fact, less than 10 seconds. That seems ridiculous, but it is. And if you then quickly quench it, you can actually freeze all those those pores and that surface area in and it's there and available for reactivity when you're making your MHL or our ActiMag. Yeah, I get that, but I'm still sceptical. Is that the whole story? No, that's not the whole story. Um, When you're looking at the high surface area ActiMag, it does things that perhaps the commodity grade won't do. It is very... um, effective, for example, at removing phosphorus. Anyway, that's a story for another day, uh, and I think we've covered enough for today, but if you're happy, well, I can take you through that on another day. That sounds great. Thanks for your time, Ralph. 